Touch them up now. Good luck to both of you. Kokolo, Buenos Aires. Rios will have the red trunks, and in the silver trunks is Diego Chavez. So let's see if Rios can draw him into a brawl early. Whether Chavez is capable of going to school on that somewhat. Well, we'll see. Chavez start shows uh, some decent hand speed as he opens up with the first uh, jabs. Well, oh, Chavez is bringing it to him to start it out. This didn't take long. No. A hard left hand by Rios. Rios starched him with a hard left of that right cheek. So much for the boxing. <laughs> and so much for Chavez uh, trying to figure him out. Uh, and this is the polar opposite of the first fight we had this, this evening in which two guys who were good, well-schooled boxers stood close and boxed and banged each other. These guys are just banging. Yeah, they're banging, throwing punches from every angle, every which way, low blows, they don't care. They just keep firing. Vickers told both guys, keep them up, they don't care, they just keep firing punches. Just, uh, just to repeat myself, is Rios capable of being as strong as he is showing here early in the fight as he was as a lightweight? And, and that will unfold in this fight and subsequent fights to find out. But he's a guy who walks around the streets at about 160 pounds. But that doesn't equate to when he was uh, fighting at 140. Because he still walked the streets at 160. And 135 is a lightweight. He said he'll never go back to 140. He feels comfortable at 147 and said he made weight comfortably, but was on a very decent diet this time. Walked into a decent uppercut by uh, Chavez. Another borderline shot by Brandon. Brandon sitting down on his punches, throwing hard shots. Right back to Chavez. Oh! And he fell over his foot. Ruled immediately by Vic Dracula as no knockdown. Well, a left hook uh, helped him trip. I always, I tend to think that if it, if it starts with a punch, it should be counted. Uh, Rios just get tagged with the right hand. Whoa! There's a big right hand shot too. Yeah, uh, it's just what we thought. We got a war. This is. You can just hear the crowd. You can just hear. We show you the slip. Let's see. Yeah, there was a punch just before it, but that's a judgment call by the ref. Here's another angle on that. Yeah, and you saw the outstretched uh, foot. There was a trip too. Maybe that got the attention of Vic Draculich. And the very hard right hand there, we had the replay for you. Great job by my man Charles getting those replays for us. Always that is a super job. We go to round number two. Colonel with Molly Sullivan and my man Larry Merchant. And we've got a pier six brawl from the get-go in the first round, and it doesn't appear that the strategy has changed for either guy here in round two. Can they sustain this? For 10 rounds. Some of those taken on the back of the glove of Rios. All questions were answered in the first round, Larry. Chavez came to fight, not to feel this guy out or learn anything in the first round. And as we said, they, they didn't give a walk over to Rios for his comeback fight. Toe to toe, chin to chin.
I love that comment you had about Rios that he's the type of guy you know coming in you know what he's good, what he brings he brings excitement to the crowd and if he wants to be like a Toro Gotti this is the way Gotti fought actually Rios has more skills than Gotti had uh, I think well early in his career Gotti had real skills he won a title at a little weight but then he found out that the, the fans love the drama and uh, he became a drama king <laughs> and his trilogy with Mickey Ward Hard right Vice Chavez holding on momentarily first time he's had to hang on Rios comes with the uppercut Chavez back with his own neither one of these guys has stopped throwing punches you know Carl, uh, I have a saying that uh, television is show and tell and when the show is this good you don't have to tell a whole lot no you don't And Chavez trying to get a little bit of a breather here. The work weight for both men is uh, extraordinary with 20 seconds to go in the second round. We was asking the referee for some help. The heads came together, but no damage done. Nobody holding back whatsoever. Round three from the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, Nevada. Everybody's right on top of the ring here in this entire 3,000 seat arena. Everybody has a perfect ringside seat. Whether you're in the upper deck, the first balcony, or the top, you've got a great seat here. You're right on top of the ring. It looks like Chavez would like to fight from a little bit of distance. But Rios is so clever and quick about getting on the inside that he doesn't allow it to happen. Oh, he's right in there. Really whacked him with the left hand. That looked like it just knocked the snot out of him. It did. Literally. Well, Rios almost left his feet. He put so much behind that left hook. Luckily for Chavez, it sailed over his head. Big Dragulich telling him, make sure you don't clamp down on that arm. You've done it a couple of times. Good right hand by Chavez. Chavez works three downstairs, then the straight right hand. Brandon shakes his head, no. Diego sets up in front of him. Nothing fancy about either one of these guys. They're just going right after each other. Gotta fly, you got to fly for 15 hours, and somebody when you get off the plane, somebody's hitting you on the ribs like that. <laughs> now he's got another 15-hour flight to fly back to recuperate. It sure would be a lot easier on the soreness if he had a win instead of a uh, a loss. We're talking about Chavez, of course, who has to fly back to Argentina. And all of Diego's wins, but one have come in Argentina. So to be, you know, the U.S. audience, of course, on TopRank.com worldwide, but he understands the value of tonight as well. well. He certainly does. He knows a win can put him in the big view for a lot of opponents. They can line him right up for world title shot. It might take Brandon a couple of more before he gets another title shot. Just seems Larry like Brandon Rios is landing more heavier shots, giving him the rounds than a close man. And what's he doing? Taking a final away? Well, he warned him. That becomes a two-point round now. That's a big round for Rios. Dragulich warned him. That he...
All right, we moved around number four. Good right hand. Hey, Chavez, he starts, he starts every round, he started hard. Well, he's come to fight, there's no question about that. Rio's trying to milk another point if he could on Chavez holding him. Way to get your points is to keep banging him. Good movement now by Chavez as he bounces left and around to his right. He allows Rios to come in on him. Chavez has had a real good first minute in, of this round. His best of the fight, I think. Yes. And he's having a terrific round now. Had Reels trying to headbutt him there? He's a guy where if you get the best of you know, could be upset. Get that head in the face of Chavez. Second minute gone. Chavez maintaining the lead in this round. I'm not quite sure what Rios is upset about there. You know. Well, he get hit. He get hit by you know when they're in a bit of a clinch there. But you know he does the same thing. He's, He's frustrated about something because he's losing this round for one thing. And maybe he realizes it. Borderline low blow again. Big left hand landed by Chavez. Chavez coming from a boxing family ought to have some ability to box and stay uh, at a distance. Rios is necessary. You mentioned the fact that Rios has just closed that gap and fights right in his chest. And this is definitely a Chavez round. A very good round to Chavez. Throwing. He wants him to come in behind the jab and, and when he gets in, stay in. Well, Chavez had a very good uh, fourth round, no question about it. And Larry had him winning the third round, although he didn't get it, pick up an extra point because of the point that was taken away from him. I actually thought Rios won that round, but there's a significant difference. Now that, he used that. that was a good jab from Rios. This is just really, really tough boxing. You know, and as much as Chavez wants out, Rios wants in. Chavez to the body, back upstairs. Rios trying to get back on the inside, but he's not jabbing him. He's winging heavy shots, and Chavez is willing to exchange with him. Rios just flings him around, throws him down, and that's frustration, too. Now Vic will warn him about Vic takes the point away and evens things up. Fair play. To me, like referee's being a little officious. Uh, he is, but you know, this is a fight that also Larry, in fairness to Vic, could get out of hand in a hurry too. As when things don't go Rios' way, as he saw throwing him down to the canvas, and sometimes referees like to even up where he took the other point away. So the penalized points are even now, anyway.
Chavez pot shots Rios a couple of times, showing nice foot movement. Oh, what a right hand! Right on the button! Got Rios, it didn't stagger him, but by golly, he got nailed. Well, he's, he's winning the battle at the moment of staying outside, of keeping Rios off him. And that's what he wants to do for sure. He comes inside and wraps him up again. You better watch that arm in the manner in which he does it. I think Chavez won that round, Larry. So now this is anybody's fight after five rounds. Both guys have been penalized a point. And Chavez has had two good rounds in a row, and maybe three in a row. Hard, hard right hand by Rios. And he better land some hard stuff right now, because Chavez has won the last couple of rounds. Boy, you were right when you said they didn't pick a patsy for Rios to make this comeback with. See, Chavez is getting more confident. You see him kind of push him away uh, from the last clinch. Well, remember, we talked about Rios' strength at 147 and with it to veil. And so it's a the question is right here. You know, is is it showing? Is he just not that strong at 147 where he can beat most guys down? Well, he's certainly not as powerful as he was at 135, and that's clear to me. Although he's held up against some pretty good shots he's taken. Two terrific fights tonight. The the first one, you know, a real boxing match. And now this one is a, is a real brawl in a lot of ways, but some very good boxing along the way. Now Vic calls him in again. I assume that's over the movement of the head of Rios. Crowd loves it. Oh, man. He got cracked with that right hand. Things are not going Brandon Rios' way right now, I'll tell you. Getting punch shouted by this guy. Chavez getting more and more confident and more brave as he stands in front of this guy. Rios is not jabbing his way in, as Robert Garcia has told him. And he's not holding him off with the jab, much less jabbing his way in. A tough, hard fight. And again, Chavez starts out first. He clipped again with a solid right hand. And he keeps getting pot shot with that right hand. And it doesn't seem to bother him because he wants to land his own right hand. That first minute of that round, it appeared to me, Larry, that Chavez landed many more heavy blows to the head of 
Rios than did Rios land to Chavez. This is getting really tough for Rios right now. And it's been tough throughout. It's been like this from the get go. Both guys in terrific shape. You want to, as we get to the later rounds, if that, uh, you know, late visa and the long trip on uh, Thursday will take any toll on Chavez's legs or his wind or anything else in the late going. Of course, he had all the hard work done before he got here, but he was scheduled to be here a week ago. Minute to go. Rios better land something here. He's in where he wants to be. I think this has been a pretty good round for Rios, actually. You know, compared to the last. It's definitely four. better than the last two or three. And in your case, four, because you had that four rounds back you gave to Chavez as well. There's not a soul sitting here who thinks they could do this, yeah. <laughs> including us. That's for sure. <laughs> the infighting of Rios just might give him this round. Oh, look at the legs, it's still good at Chavez. Through seven, wrestling him down to the canvas, which Larry takes exception to. And here we go with round number eight. Three full rounds to go. And a very close and very tough battle for both men. Chavez touches him up with that jab a couple of times to hold him off. And he ties him up. He knows what to do. Obviously, he's seen this guy when he gets on the inside and cannot box him, he ties him up. But he wants to fight out here, and he's successful out there. Rios is successful on the inside. Now let's see what he says here. Taking another point of that. Oh, that's tough. One point off for what? Unsportsmanlike conduct? Well, they, they were breaking up on the inside, and he, and he uh, I think he punched Rios while they were separating. The legs for the first time of uh, Chavez may be weakened just a bit, although he still has good movement. Good left hook inside by Rios. Have to remember that Chavez uh, did this when he make his when he made his uh, debut in the U.S. and uh, he was stopped in the tenth round. Showing movement again and the life back on those legs. Moving around quite a bit, Chavez now. Rios continues to try to hunt him down, cutting off the ring. Remember in the early going, folks, it was all Chavez coming forward all the time. Now it's Rios forcing the fight all the time. I wonder what that sports psychologist is thinking along about now. <laughs> That's the sports psychologist that uh, Rios enlisted after he lost his second uh, fight in the road. Uh, that one to Pacquiao. Well, that got him back in the ring and for sure it got him in great shape. Or at least the concentration to dedicate himself to be in shape on time. 
and on weight. So that much he's got to be proud of. Uh, I think Rio saw it last the man. All right, this is round number nine. Six more minutes of this brawl. And I wouldn't care if there's 60 minutes when they're fighting like this. I love this stuff. Nobody's been down, but Chavez has lost two points for foul play, and Rios, in fact, has lost one. And there's a takedown. He had him around the head and dragged it down. And now Rios can milk this to get some time to rest a bit. Yeah. It was a, it, it started out as an accidental takedown, but Chavez uh, um, helped to make it happen at the end. Certainly put it, did. Put it that way. But you know, when you come to a guy's backyard where things are going to go against you, and you're as tough and hard as this guy is from a fighting family. And there he is again, wrapping up that head. And he's done it to the elbow. Look at these two guys. That's it. He disqualifies him. He disqualifies Diego Chavez. This fight's all over. This fight is over. Big Dragonic has disqualified Diego Chavez. He had seen enough. Yeah. Now he grabs him by the head. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and you know, he could have released that as they were going down. Right. With that, that could have been a, another point deducted. Yeah, because that's flagrant right there. So that could have been two points. He took one point. Now let's see at the end of the fight. And they're going at it. And Vic is trying to tell him. And the guy is giving him guff. And that's it. He disqualifies. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm not 100% sure Can you either. You tell me. And the reaction is extraordinary. He goes, "Hey, what happened?" Well, we'll get the official particulars, but there's no question about one thing: Chavez was disqualified. This Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Referee Vic Draculich, following repeated warnings for flagrant fouls, calls a halt to this contest and disqualifies Diego Chavez. The official time of the stoppage is one minute, 26 seconds of round number nine. The winner by disqualification, Brandon Bam Bam Rio. Well, in a fight in which there shouldn't be any losers, it almost ends as if there are no winners.